This example consists of solid and fluid regions of a tractor rear axle. We will use the default mechanical settings, but switch to use the curvature size function. We will use a large minimum element size. Since by default the defeaturing tolerance is set to one half the minimum element size, this means significant defeaturing will be done on this example. I will assign a patch conforming tet mesh method to the fluid region and set the mid-side nodes to be dropped. I will now isolate the bolts and assign a multi-zone mesh method to those bolts so that they are hex meshed automatically. When I generate mesh, it will use my eight processors to generate mesh on a parallel part-by-part -part basis. As mentioned in the previous demonstration, Automatic virtual topologies could be a good way to reduce the total element count. In the past, this or the use of the patch independent tet mesh method was often the best way of reducing the total element count, as aggressive mesh based defeaturing could lead to problems with meshing robustness. In 16.0, there has been significant improvements to the patch conforming tet and shell mesh methods so that the mesh based defeaturing can significantly reduce the total element count while still capturing the quadratic mesh shape for mechanical meshes and providing the speed customers appreciate from the patch conforming mesh method. This demonstration illustrates the improved mesh based defeaturing. A good rule of thumb of when to use mesh based defeaturing and when to use virtual topologies or geometry simplifications is as follows. The min size often controls the total element count as it controls the trade-off between feature capturing and element size. If you increase the min size, it will generally reduce the number of elements in the model because small features can be ignored. However, if you increase the min size too much, it can make meshing more difficult. Therefore, it is good to find the smallest real feature in a model, a bolt hole, a cutout, a boss, or some similar feature, and set the min size slightly smaller than the thickness of this real feature. If you do this, the mesh-based defeaturing should work well. If you need to use a larger min size to achieve the element count desired, you may need to use virtual topologies or manually defeature the small features. You can see in the resulting mesh that many small faces, slivers, etc. are automatically defeatured while all major features are still captured. This automated mesh-based defeaturing makes the mesher more robust for these types of geometries while still ensuring that all real features are respected.